Hey, what's going on everybody? Yes, I am still alive. Um, I know it's been like two months uh, since I put a video out uh, and that's pretty bad. Um, I really wanted to try and get better at my release uh, release schedule, but apparently I've gotten worse. So now I will say that I have been super busy with school. Um, I'm in my last two terms. Um, I have this term I'm in now and then one more. And so I'm getting into some stuff that I'm not real familiar with. Uh, some of it I've never done before, so it's really taken up a lot of time. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm going to put a video out. Um, I don't know whether you guys care about this or not, but um, I'm going to put a video out on my whole experience with uh, school because I'm in my mid-40s. I'm going back to school to look at completely changing my career field. Um, just a lot of stuff that just isn't very common, I don't think. Um, might be getting a little more common, but um, anyway, so uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm gonna put a video out just kind of covering my experiences on that and what I think about it so far and kind of my take on college overall um, as far as uh, necessity versus desire, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so just some thoughts there. But today I wanted to create a quick video um, because I wanted to talk to, to a little bit, um, uh, talk uh, to the newbies a little bit, uh, the people that are just coming into the Linux environment, uh, people that might not know what they're looking for, people that are overwhelmed with stuff that's going on uh, with Windows and trying to figure a way out. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit and um, it's really all about um, one of the biggest things I see and that is Linux, Linux distributions in general. I think one of the biggest reasons that people struggle when they're coming to Linux is they try to pick that perfect Linux distro. What's the perfect Linux distro? What's the best distro? Which, which distro is the one that is going to be the best for me? Um, and so there's a lot of questions that people have and then they get online and they get on these forums and they start looking at all this stuff and all these comments and oh you got to be on Gen 2 and oh you got to be on Arch and no no you want to be on Debian because you want stable you don't oh Ubuntu or Linux Mint those are the ways to go. Um, there's a lot of opinions out there there is a lot of information out there and there is a lot to sift through um, and while I don't think I have all the answers I am gonna throw in my two sets because you know what why not um, I've been on Linux now for roughly five six years um, I've had the YouTube channel up for about four or five years I think uh, and like I said we're slow growing but uh, we're still moving along um, but in those four or five years, six years, however long I've been on Linux, um, I've come to glean a little bit of knowledge, some from other people, some from just my experience using the system. So first things first, what I want to get out of the way is there is no perfect Linux distribution. There is no Linux distribution that is the best Linux distribution over all the other ones. And there is no exactly perfect right distribution for you. The distribution that is perfect for you is the one you make perfect for you. I am a firm believer, I've said this before, and I've taken a little flack for it, but I am a firm believer of distribution does not matter. And I say that with the caveat that, yes, I know the distributions are different. Yes, I know Arch is different from Fedora, is different from Debian, is different from uh, Ubuntu, is different from Void, is different from Gentoo. I know that they are all different. They have differences, they have similarities, they have things that... Uh, work better on some and not on the others but I am a firm believer that if you sit down and you pick a distribution you can make that distribution do exactly what you want it to do now that's gonna take a little bit of work that's gonna take a little bit of elbow grease you're gonna have to get in and do things but I'm gonna give you some pointers here first things first when you're picking your Linux distribution you want to go with something that is catches your eye I guess and I don't want to I don't want to come off as saying just pick something that looks pretty, but you're going to be spending time in this, so you want to want to spend time in it. So you don't want to pick something that, oh God, like like for me, for example, the first thing I tried was Ubuntu, and as soon as I logged into that purple and orange uh, environment, I thought there's no way I can stare at this all day. Now, that being said, I was unaware of all the customizations you could do and all that when I first started, so, but the idea of picking one that looks good to you I mean that more along the lines of pick something that you are comfortable with, something that looks comfortable to you. If that means picking something that's really Windows-esque or something that uh, looks my, like Mac or whatever, then great, pick that, do that. But the couple things I want you to pay attention to when you're actually picking your Linux distribution. Now, I know you're going to go online and you're going to look through all these, all these different forums. You're going to go watch a million YouTube videos. You're going to just try and figure out what's going on. Um, 
and you're going to get all kinds of answers. But you need to worry about a few key things. First off, the, the number one thing you want to worry about, the one, number one thing when you're first switching over, hardware. What are you running? What type of system? Desktop, laptop? Um, are you running NVIDIA? Are you running onboard graphics? Are you running old hardware? Are you running new hardware? You've got to pay attention to what you're running. You need to pick something that is going to work well with what you have. If you have something brand new, bleeding edge, of course, you're going to want to pick a distribution that's going to cater towards that. If you got something that's a little older that can really just, that's just stable as can be, you're going to want to pick something that is going to work well with that. So pay attention to your hardware. That's going to be my first point. Pay attention to your hardware, what you're running. Look for a distribution that has great support for what you have. Secondly, what are you going to be using your system for? Are you going to be mainly checking your emails and surfing the web? Then you can use pretty much anything out there. Use whatever distro you want at that point. Once you've taken into account hardware and narrowed down the hundreds upon hundreds of choices of Linux distributions that there are out there, once you've got it narrowed down to the ones that suit your hardware, what are you using your system for? Are you in development? Are you a software engineer? Are you just using it to surf the web and to check your email? Are you a online shopper? Are you, you know, what are you doing with it? Because there's going to be different distributions that actually cater to that. And again, all this stuff I'm telling you is taking into account that you are brand new to Linux. So when I said distribution doesn't matter, I mean it. You can pick anything though because once you get more familiar with it is more along the lines of when distribution doesn't matter. And now I'm gonna go back on that and say once you do get familiar with it and you find that one distribution, you're gonna go back to distribution does matter because you're gonna find the one you love, it's gonna be what you like. And so anyway, you're gonna go from distribution matters because you gotta find one that fits your hardware and what you're gonna use it for to distribution doesn't matter when you're comfortable enough to build any distribution the way you want it to distribution does matter again because this is the distro I fell in love with and have made my own. So. This is just a rambling video, I'm sorry. So I get kind of sidetracked here. But anyway, we're gonna go from finding the hard, the distribution that suits your hardware, understanding what you're gonna use it for, and then next of all is going to be read the documentation on that. Stop going to the forums, stop asking questions to other people, go in and read the documentation. Go to the distribution's website, find out what they do, how they do things, what their package management system is, how many packages they have in it, is it gonna have the stuff that you're gonna wanna use? Um, are you gonna have to learn how to build packages? Eventually you will want to learn how to build packages, but are you gonna have to learn to do that right off the bat? Find out as much as you can about that distribution. Once you've gone and done the research, then and only then go around and start asking questions. Go into the forums for that distribution that you've decided you want to use. Let them know, hey, I'm a newbie. I'm thinking about joining this distribution. Pros and cons, please. What's good about this? What's bad about this? Now, some forums are going to be more friendly than others. I hate to say it, but the Linux community is a fickle bunch. Um, you get into the wrong forum and people are really just going to tell you RTFM and if they tell you that tell them I already did and that's why I'm here asking questions because I'm trying to make a decision so you're going to find those people out there unfortunately they're just everywhere but get on the forums get on get on the chats get on the different places where you can ask questions and get as much information about it as you can now the last point of advice I'm going to give you I was on one side of the fence for, but now I'm completely on the other side of the fence for, and that is dual booting. Now, in the beginning, I was all for dual, dual booting. I was saying, yep, dual boot. Get, get Windows on one, get your Linux on the other until you're completely comfortable in Linux. You can have your Windows to fall back on. I have actually changed my opinion on that. You know, do what's going to work best for you, but my personal opinion is when you have that security blanket, you're much more likely to just go, oh, I give up, I'm gonna go back over to Windows. And then you go do what you're gonna do on Windows and you don't learn. You don't teach yourself how to make it work on Linux, you don't. It takes a lot longer. That's what I did. I started out in a VM, running Linux Mint, played around in it, then I went to a dual boot, but I kept jumping back over to Windows. Oh, I can't get that. I got, I'm just gonna go back over to Windows and do that real quick. And it took me a lot longer to pick up on some things than it would have had I just dove in and taking care of business. Now I understand there's gonna be some instances where that doesn't work for you. Um, people that need certain programs on Windows, yes, I get it. I get there's, I have to have dual boot on Windows. I actually have one laptop that's got Windows and one that's got uh, my Void Linux setup. But 
I only have that for school. There's certain things for school that I have to use programs in Windows for. I can't use a VM because it, it's just, yeah, it's stupid. So as soon as I'm done with my degree, though, Windows is gone for good. But I do understand that there, there are certain situations where, yes, you're going to have to have Lin Linux and Windows. But as much as possible, try to do it without a security blanket of Windows or Mac or whatever you're switching from. Try and dive in head first, go in and figure things out. Because really that's the main way you're gonna learn is you get in and you try. Go in, if you're somebody who learns from information and reading, go in and read the manuals. Go in and read the manuals, figure out what they say, then go try it on your system. If you're one that learns from doing, get into your system and start tinkering. That's me. I learned by just getting my hands dirty. I've been an automotive technician for 30 years. Um, I tear things apart. I figure things out. That's what I do. My brain goes into overdrive and I just go to town. If that's the kind of person you are, great. Jump in. Don't forget about the manuals though. Excuse me. Learn the best way you can. Learn the best way you know how. Everybody learns different. That's one thing we learned at homeschool and our kids is everybody learns differently. What worked for one of our kids didn't necessarily work for the other one. What uh, learning style really catered to one worked like garbage for another one. Everybody's different. Everybody learns differently. Figure out how you learn and do it. If you got to read manuals and you learn information that way, do that. If you have to just get hands on, do that. If you got to do a mixture of both, do that. If you learn by watching videos, do that. Whatever you got to do. But I will say, do not have the security blanket. Get rid of Windows, get rid of Mac OS, whichever one you're getting getting away from and dive in to Linux. Understand what's going on. Understand your system. Now, I'll probably get some people out here saying this is stupid, bad, bad advice, whatever. But, you know, that's that's just what it is. That's my personal opinion um, on the best way to get in and learn Linux, the best way to pick a distribution. Again, there is no perfect distribution. There is no distribution that's the best overall. They're all out there for different reasons. You have bleeding edge distros like Void and Arch and Arco and uh, all these others. You got compiled distros like Gen2 that's going to be built specifically for your machine. You got stable as heck distributions like... Uh, Debian and Ubuntu. You've got stuff that's just going to work. You've got stuff that you can tinker with. You've got stuff that's going to be made that's going to be better for dev. You've got stuff that's going to be better for learning. You've got stuff that's going to be better for just surfing the web. There's all kinds of stuff. There is a distribution for everybody out there. And you just got to go out and find it. And once you do find it and you have a little bit of experience with Linux, I guarantee you, you can go to any other distribution, pick it up, and make it do exactly what you want it to do. And then, at that point, distribution does not matter. But then, once you find that one you fall in love with, like I said, distribution is going to matter again because I've tried numerous times now to switch away from Void Linux, which is my distro of choice, and I fail to do it every time because I just got to get back because, and not that I'm not, I'm not going to say Void Linux is better than all the distros out there, but for me, Void Linux is better than all the other distros out there. And so that is why I stick with it. So that's just kind of my two cents. Sorry about the rambling video. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I just wanted to kind of get something out there. Um, it's been like two months since I've had a video. So um, I got more in the works. I've just been super busy with school. Again, I'm going to talk about school in one of my videos coming up. I'm going to, I've got a video coming up on my new setup. Um, it's my, I call it my Hyperland killer, but uh, I know it's not a Hyperland killer, but uh, uh Everything's Hyperlin now. Everybody, everybody wants to be on Hyperlin, Hyperlin this and Hyperlin that. And everybody seems to forget about all the other window managers and stuff and compositors and stuff out there. And I just want to kind of bring a little light back to those because guess what? They're still viable and great options. So um, I do have a video coming out on my quote unquote Hyperlin killer, which uh, is my favorite window manager. And if you know me and you've watched my videos, you might know what that is. Um, but so I've got videos coming out on that. I've got a couple other videos coming out uh, that I've got in the works, or not in the works, but kind of locked and loaded that I got that I'm going to make here once I uh, get a little more free time. But yeah, that's uh, that's it. And that being said, I hope you guys have a a great rest of your uh, great rest of your evening, a great rest of your week, and stay safe and God bless.